Hi, welcome to this video about how do I use the CAL coding guidelines in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. My name is Mark Brummel, I'm an MVP for Microsoft Dynamics NAV and an evangelist for the NAV Design Patterns project. This video is made in collaboration with Platan, a Microsoft Dynamics Learning Center from Belgium and Microsoft. At the end of this video, you will have an idea on how to implement the CEL coding guidelines in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. The objective of this, of this video is to go through the coding guidelines and talk about the elements one by one. And at the end of this video, we will be going through the data dictionary about variable naming, man manual or automatic. Design patterns are common solutions or best practices to solve problems. This is a well-known concept in computer programming and can therefore be applied to Dynamics NAV as well. Although this video is not about a specific design pattern, it is part of the series around design patterns. In this video we will be going through five steps. In step one we will be talking about code design. In step two We'll be talking about localizability. Step 3 is about readability. Step 4 is about variable naming. And in step 5, we will briefly touch on Hungarian notation. Let's start with step 1 code design. The compiler in Microsoft Dynamics NAV doesn't check for any unused variables. As a developer, it is your own responsibility to clean them up. Leaving them can be confusing while doing future maintenance on the objects. In each function in CEL we have the option of making a variable by reference or var. If we do that we should have the clear intention of changing the values. If we don't change the values the variable should not be marked as by reference. When we declare a text constant we can define placeholders for variables. The compiler does not check if they match. We should make sure ourselves. When variables are not used, they should not be set. Make sure that when refactoring code to clean up the entire stack and not leave something that does not have any meaning. Avoid overflows by making sure the length of variables match each other when assigning values. When using a width scope in a table, always check if a field or variable is not used in both tables. This can lead to ambiguous results. Check your code for cyclomatic complexity. Each if case for while and repeat get a point, and the total number of points in your function should never exceed 25. A function should never have more than 100 lines of code. Avoid high class coupling. Each variable of the type record, page, query, code units, report and XML port count as one. Each function should only contain a maximum of 30. Let's move on with step 2 of this video, localizability. Always use text constants. This will allow you to translate your application. Therefore, table caption and field caption should be used rather than table name and field name. When hard coding date formulas, put the angle brackets around the formula and use the English notation. This way it will always work, no matter what language you work in. Use the connects punctuation. Always end messages and errors with a period and a confirm with a question mark. They are not automatically added. However, the field error has an automatic period. Remember that when using it. Actions should always have an image. Step 3 of this video is about readability of your code. Use spaces to make your code more readable. Use them around keywords but not with an unary operator. Avoid using blank lines when within code that belongs together and put a space 
around parentheses and binary operators. Start a comment one space after the code. Never put a space in between an array, an option assignment or after the next or find commands. Begin and end commands are not to be used unless it's really required. The same goes for true and false. Any binary boolean operator works fine without using the true or false keywords. Indentation should typically be done using two spaces. Start any new line of CAL code on a new line with proper indentation. Each structure has their own indentation rules. Please look at the CEL coding guidelines document for more docu details on each specific statement. Don't use parentheses if a function doesn't have parameters. This is CEL and not C++ or C sharp. Only use parentheses if it helps the compiler to understand your intention. Never start a new line of CEL code on the same line even though it's technically possible. Let's discuss variable naming. In Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2015, variable names are automatically determined based on a set of rules. Let's see how that works. This is a code unit and within the code unit we have defined a list of global variables of the types record, page, report, code unit, query and XML port. We have not defined the subtypes yet. Let's look at some subtypes to see how the names are populated. We can see that the GL entry VAT entry link is converted to this variable name. Only the letters are moved to the variable name and the spaces are removed. The same happens if we use the GL account where you use list as a page. The date compression GL budget entries. Sales post yes and no. The VAT entries base amount sum. And the SEPA pane. XML port. It is highly recommended to use the suggested object name by Microsoft Dynamics NAV. However, there is a list of approved abbreviations in the CEL coding guidelines. It is recommended to make your own list of approved abbreviations for your custom objects. Using standard naming conventions makes your code easier to read and it makes it easier to copy and paste code from one part of your application to another. Variables should be self-explaining and never be numbered. If you need two instances of the same subtype, then explain what you want to do with them. When explaining a variable, use a suffix. Avoid using prefixes since the symbol menu only works on the first letter of the variable. This is a snapshot of the approved variable list name from the CEL coding guidelines. Please have a look at the document for a complete list of all of the approved abbreviations. The last part of this video is about Hungarian notation. This way of noting variables was invented by a Hungarian employee of Microsoft many many years ago. The intention is to explain the type of the variable in the name. This way of notating variables was abandoned by Microsoft since 1996 and it should never be implemented in Dynamics NAV or in any Microsoft programming language. In this video we went through the CEL coding guidelines in five steps. We talked about code design, localizability, readability, variable naming and Hungarian notation. Thank you for watching this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in another episode of the How Do I video series for design patterns in Microsoft Dynamics NAV.